Good morning, guys, and welcome to the channel. Hope that you all are having a great day. Uh, today is the day that we are finally going to do a full comprehensive review on the ZR2 as it sits here and warms up a little bit. But yes, this is going to be a full comprehensive review. A lot of reviews online talk about the features and the price and well, you know, it's good and it drives good on road and everything. But rarely do you see them get tested off road and that's really what this vehicle is made for. We're gonna do all that other stuff, but we're also gonna test it off road as well and it should be really fun. With that being said, let's get right into it. So let's dive into this in-depth review of the ZR2 and you can see there are some flurries falling. Hopefully it holds off and we don't have a full blown storm coming down on us as we're trying to do this. Uh, but anyway, I am going to start where I normally do and that is with the key. You can see the key for the Colorado ZR2. Very normal looking, uh, nothing really to talk about. Chevy logo on the front and then your buttons on the back. You have an alarm button, lock and unlock. Uh, the one nice feature it does have is automatic start. So of course you press the lock button and hold in the top. And it will start up for you, which is really nice if you live where I do. And as you can see, when it's very cold, uh, it's nice to kind of press this button from the inside of your home. You don't have to come outside and then you can have all your settings in there so that you can, as soon as you get in the truck, the heat is on and the heated seat is on and all that good stuff. Definitely a nice feature to have. One thing I would change though is the key is just, like I said, really bland, you know, and I get it, you know, Chevrolet is a company that sells millions and millions of vehicles. You know, they don't have time to really dive into every single one and worry about the little details, but it would be nice to just have something, you know, if it said ZR2 on it, if it was a little bit cooler, you know, maybe felt a little bit more high quality. This feels like a almost like a, a toy you'd give your baby to play with like a fake set of keys like it's so light and uh you know just doesn't feel very good there's nothing like cool about it that's one detail i'm sure most people wouldn't care but it'd be neat especially for like their more special vehicles like a zr2 the ford raptor you get a special key that says raptor on it might be nice to see something like that for this truck looking at the outside styling of the zr2 i love it right off the bat it looks really cool really aggressive i love the hood i do wish that the vent was real on the hood but i guess beggars can't be choosers my opinion though i mean if you're going to put in a vent you might as well make it real. How hard is it? But either way, it looks really cool. Uh, the front end, very aggressive as well. The black bow tie, a touch on all ZR2s and the blacked out grill, no chrome here, which I definitely like. The front bumper is extremely aggressive for a stock vehicle. Quite frankly, I can't even believe they sell it like this because it leaves the front tires completely exposed and uh, even off-road based vehicles uh, for efficiency purposes usually a company will put something in front of it and try to make it more aerodynamic but for the zr2 which i love by the way the zr2 they just said nah just leave it leave it open it really is basically a true pre-runner bumper and it's incredible it also has a quarter inch thick steel skid plate underneath so it's not a piece of plastic that looks like it might protect the truck it really does along with two front recovery hooks because they know the zr2 will really go off road and if you get stuck which i don't think it will but if you do you have hooks easily accessible to get you out. Having that wide open front bumper also makes it really easy to see your amazing ZR2 suspension setup, including your GM Chevrolet Performance Multimatic DSSV spool valve damping dual reservoir shocks. Definitely a bit of a mouthful, but it's a cool one because it's something you can tell people when you're telling them about your new Colorado. The side profile of the truck looks great as well. You can tell it's much wider than a regular Colorado and the extra little plastic fender flares make it even wider still and you might see a bar going across the bottom of the cab on the truck and I'm sure your first instinct is going to be well that must be a step to get in but it's not it's a real rock slider so you have to climb up in the truck it's not a step if you try to step on it you might slip off uh, it is in fact a rock slider again a true piece of off-road equipment to protect your ZR2 in the event you're climbing over rocks and you accidentally slide over something or whatever it also comes in handy though in everyday life because if somebody pulls up next to you too close in a parking lot and they open their door maybe they have children little children and they fling their door open the rock slider will catch the door and it won't damage your paint. ZR2 that I have here has the 3.6 liter V6 that has 300 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque, which might not sound like a whole lot, but it really moves this truck well. I talk about that more in the on-road portion of this upload, but it is not a heavy vehicle at all, so it doesn't need a whole lot of power. It's not a full-size truck, and 300 is plenty. Like, you'd be surprised at how fast this truck really is. 2.8 liter four-banger Duramax is also available, which is really cool. Haven't driven one of those. 
uh, but I might be inclined to option mine with the Duramax engine if I were to buy one. That one has 186 horsepower, so a little bit low on the power, but it has 400 pound-feet of torque, uh, which definitely I feel like would move this thing pretty quick from a low speed. Now, the Duramax engine is fitted to a more old-school six-speed trans, while the V6 has an eight-speed trans, and I really like the tuning they did for it in this application. Really, It's really nice. It doesn't hunt for gears, and it's one of the best uses of the eight-speed for GM that I've seen. Back to the weight for a second because I forgot to mention, depending on how you option the truck, and there's a few different configurations you can do. This one, for example, is a quad cab with the short bed. I think for the ZR2, though, you can only do either this or the extended cab with a slightly longer bed, but either way, it's gonna be about 4,500 to 5,000 pounds, which for reference, a Hellcat is 4,400 pounds. If you ever wondered, a Hellcat does in fact weigh as much as an off-road four-wheel drive pickup truck with locking diffs. When it comes to the overall styling on the outside of the truck, I love it. It's got a great aggressive, like really square stance to it. And again, you can tell right away, like it's something different coming down the road. And it's actually a little bit taller than a standard like Z71 four-wheel drive Silverado. So it's a little bit taller than a full-size truck. It really provides for a great driving position and you can see other uh, over other vehicles when you're driving really easily. I love a lot about this truck and the wheels might be my favorite, at least one of, if not my favorite uh, little detail on it. Every ZR2 has this style of wheel and every single one of them has this kind of like dark bronze outer edge on the rim with ZR2 printed on it. Uh, really, really cool touch. Moving on to the bed of the truck, it has a ZR2 bed liner along with a few uh, ratchet tie down areas. No LED light though, like you can get in the full size truck. There is no cargo light, although there is one on the back of the cab, which illuminates the bed of the truck pretty well. One more feature concerning the bed of the truck, it does have a locking soft open tailgate. I know you're all wondering, but Mike, does a four-wheeler fit in the bed? Yes. Yes, it does. Inside of the ZR2, nothing too crazy. You get the same inside no matter what trim level Colorado you buy, which I do wish they would integrate some cool stuff into the inside, especially if for nothing else, just for the ZR2, kind of like what Jeep does with their models. You know, there's always like little Easter eggs and stuff. And I get it, you know, it's kind of silly and gimmicky, but it is neat to at least have something to talk about and just let you know that you bought something that, you know, they put some time and effort into, like they actually care about it. Uh, the center cluster is pretty normal. Uh, same old GM font on the right and the left for your speedo and your tack. You got a gas gauge and a coolant temp gauge. Can do a few things with the center screen, but I mean, not really a whole lot. It's just basic info. And even looking back to like the 2013 Raptor I just did, the old gen Raptor, talking about four or five years ago now, uh, that was miles ahead of this as far as your center screen and the gauge cluster goes. Um, so again, I wish they would update it, maybe make it full digital. That'd be cool. Or at least add some new features. Uh, but it does get the job done. Same with the infotainment center, the main screen here. Uh, there are a few neat little features. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android auto, which is really nice. Um, so basically that's a good way to sum it up. Everything in here gets the job done. It just doesn't really do it in like a cool or exciting way. With the HVAC system, it does have dual zone climate control and heated seats, which is really nice. Moving down the center stack to your array of buttons, this is where things get fun. It's got the bed light, which I talked about, nothing crazy. Hill descent control, trailering the hazard lights, and traction control on the far left. But those two buttons right there on the left side of the hazard button to the right of the traction button, those are your diff locks. Most vehicles you get in, even most trucks, are not going to have diff lock buttons buttons and those are really cool. Of course, you got one for the back and the front. Now, most trucks with a differential operate with an open diff so that when you're driving on the road and you're making a turn, you can make a turn without the vehicle skipping and jumping around and making it difficult. In other words, when you're driving around and your diff is in kind of normal open mode, your wheels can turn at a different speed so that you can go around that corner because the outside wheel has to travel more rotations than the inside wheel. This is great for everyday use, but when you're off-roading, you want your wheels to turn at the same time. When you're really stuck or trying to climb something, uh, if you have an open diff, the wheels are just gonna spin and you won't go anywhere. 
However, when you lock your diff so that your wheels can only turn at the same speed and it allows you to climb over anything, like the difference between an open diff and a locked diff is, is insane. For off-roading anyway, or for drifting, like you see people weld their diff, that's essentially what they're doing for uh, making a cheap like drift car, you can weld your diff. It's essentially like having a locked diff, that's, that's what it does. To activate your diff locks, you go to four wheel drive low. Now four high is kind of normal, that will be just fine for what most people do with the truck. Uh, but if you do need them, you go four low, neutral and then you can press your front or rear diff lock button uh normally you would do both One more thing your transmission selector here is kind of weird i wish they put it on the column like in the full-size trucks uh, but it does have you know your normal park reverse neutral drive uh, and then lower gears and then also has a little plus and minus button on the side not unlike the raptor for shifting gears no paddles though overall you know it's pretty comfortable in here again gets the job done might not be flashy but it works does have a heated steering wheel which i forgot to talk about with the hvac stuff and it's got voice controls on the wheel it's got the trailering controls which is nice um, I feel like it's got plenty of storage. It does have a wireless charging pad for your phone. Two cup holders, a little center storage compartment up front, and the big one under the armrest in the middle. The seats are comfy. It would be nice to have a little bit more bolstering, but not really a big deal. You know, I'm kind of nitpicking here. And the ZR2 uh, embroidered logo on the headrest is, is a nice touch. Back is roomy. It might be a small truck, but it's not that small inside. You could easily fit four adults in here on a trip. Because space is at a premium, in a smaller truck, you need all the storage you can get, and that's where the underseat storage compartment comes in, where you can put stuff. That is going to do it for the overview of the ZR2. Let's take it out for a drive. driving the ZR2, something that I have really enjoyed doing over the past week or so. And it's like I've said multiple times in the videos throughout, but in case, you know, you're not a follower of the channel, and, and if you are, I'm sorry, I know you've heard, you've heard this like six times already. But if you're just like stopping by on this particular video and you, you're looking at maybe buying a ZR2, the one thing I love about it, and the be I think the best overall feature, is that it drives to have fun. You know how like a lot of vehicles, normal vehicles, you get in them, and you get the sense like they don't like to be driven in an aggressive way. Um, you know, you're always hunting for the right gear. Like if you press the gas, nothing really happens and you're waiting for a downshift. The ZR2 is always like, it's always like ready to, like I barely tap the gas and it's always ready to go. It's like, yes, come on, let's go. I love that about it. It's such a punchy little truck and you get the sense, like it's a little fighter. I, I mean, I don't know. It just, it really gives you a sense like, I, I don't even know how to explain it almost it feels like an old school like little off-roader it feels like an older truck than it is but in a really really good way like it's a very modern truck but the way it drives and handles like it doesn't have 47 gears that it has to go through and it doesn't shift every two seconds and it's like you know it, it's really a truck that's built for people that want to drive something fun and interesting and i feel like you know maybe not everybody wants to drive like me like you know in an aggressive way like that where you want like the minute i press the gas i want something to happen but i feel like most people who buy a zr2 are going to want to drive that way because you buy you buy a truck like this like you're the kind of person who wants to have a lot of fun and the zr2 is like perfect for that steering is great it really drives a lot more like a car you can see these little inputs here that i'm doing are immediately changing the direction of the truck now full-size truck you can do this and it doesn't really go anywhere. My truck, you can steer half halfway back and it doesn't do anything, but <laughs> that's a different story. It really has great on-road manners too, and that's another advantage of having a small truck. Like, it doesn't feel big on the street. So you can make tight turns and you can actually have fun with, like, it's not a great, it's not like a sports car, but it handles pretty damn good. Like, you can actually have fun on a back road with it. We're cruising and I want some power. And just right away, no waiting at all, and we're up. That sounds so good. 
You know, it sounds great too. I'm gonna go out on a limb, a big limb, and I'm gonna say that this truck sounds better than the new Raptor. I really think it does. And it has the GM, the Chevy uh, Performance Sports Exhaust, which is made by might have to bleep something out back there that I said because just know that if you buy this truck you're getting a really really good sounding exhaust from people that know what they're doing we're coming up on a tight turn it goes right around it that's what's weird about it too it's like it's got this suspension that handles huge bumps really easily like it glides over bumps like it's no like a pre-runner but then it's also like stiff for cornering like if you tried to do that in a regular like a Ford Explorer, you'd be like your body rolled, you'd be over, you'd be over here out the window. A really, really good truck to drive. And the more I've lived with it and gotten to see what it's like to really own one, you know, I, I find it really, really impressive. At first I was like 46 grand for that. It seems like a lot. And it is, but when you factor in the capability and how good of a daily it is, um, you know, I, I think it's really a pretty good deal. It's got a lot of really, really good stuff that you can't just like buy. You know, if you want something that looks cool, get a regular one, put a lift kit on it. You could probably come out a little cheaper, but you're not gonna get the same truck. Like this truck has stuff like locking diffs. You can't just go out and buy locking diffs. You can, but you're talking about like a major, major project. You can't just buy like a really, really capable suspension system like this truck has. Again, you can, but you're talking about a lot of money. That's what you gotta remember. Yes, 46 grand is a lot. I mean, you're knocking on 50's doorstep for a small pickup truck, but the capability is there. And for most people, I mean, it still tows 8,000 pounds. I think it tows even more with the uh, little baby Duramax, the 2.8 Duramax engine uh, option you can get, which would be really cool. Um, this is the uh, 3.6 liter V6, which is a great engine too, though. But unless you need that extra hauling and towing capability, and you need like more inside space because it's, you know, it's it's roomy in here, but if you have like a full family, I get it, you need a full size. If you don't need those two things, this is literally the perfect truck. Doing a little off-roading in the ZR2, and I love the fact that because it's a small truck, you can just go anywhere. Like, I wanna go up this hill. Oh, that's no problem, we'll go right up that hill, no problem. It's just small and maneuverable and it just does everything so easily. This is without any of the tricky stuff like the diff locks and low range. I'm just four wheel high and gone for it with traction on so it slips a little bit. But I love that it just, it's like when you off-road with a full size truck, you get the sense that like it doesn't really wanna be there and it's kinda like difficult and it's heavy and it lumbers around. This thing is just so light, just like, mm, glides up everything, goes over bumps, doesn't matter. You can really feel, I mean, for an off-roader, that's why you want something small. It's not crazy big and heavy and it just, it really maneuvers a lot better. You can adjust to things a lot easier. Now I'm coming up on a little tight space here that I would not, I'm actually gonna have to go up on the wall a little bit on the left, but I would not be able to even come close to fitting in there in my truck. Coming up to a big incline here. So the process is neutral, four low, Shift in progress, you can feel it. Stability track off, ABS light on, and then activate front locker and rear locker. And we're good to go. Oh boy, that is uh, getting awfully steep. Yes, ZR2, right up the hill, like it's nothing, I love it. And then when you're done, neutral, four, back to four high. Done. Just like that, it takes five seconds, you don't have to do anything, you sit in your heated seat, you press a button, and you have such a capable vehicle. These diff locks are epic, by the way. A rear diff lock, that's pretty normal, but a front one as well, a front locker, in a little light stock factory pickup truck. I mean, that's incredible. But one more time, just because it's fun and you love to see it. I love to see it. Everybody loves it. Right on, it's <laughs> just so easy. It's really the best part for me. You know, if you're the guy who just wants a fun off-roader and you actually do off-road, this is definitely the truck for you. Now we'll have to see when the Ranger Raptor comes out, how that does. But right now, even like the TRD Pro, it's a good little Tacoma, but it's it's got nothing on the capabilities of this truck. Ford, please come out with a Ranger Raptor so I can borrow one of those two and test them side by side. This truck is way better than a full size. Like if you actually want to off-road, 
don't buy a full-size truck buy this that folks is going to do it for this zr2 upload but let me know what you think of the truck in the comments below and once again a huge huge thank you to click lewis chevy for making this video possible definitely check them out link down below um they have tons of zr2s in stock including this one if you want as you would expect they also have a lot of other trucks in stock as well if you did enjoy don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you for watching take care and have a great night the outside wheels must spin faster than the wheels on the inside because they have a greater distance to travel in the same length of time. When a wagon turns a corner, the wheels can travel at different speeds because each one can turn freely on the axles. And in the early automobiles, the rear wheels turned separately and only one wheel was connected to the engine. But when only one wheel was driven by the engine, it had to do all the work, and it couldn't get a good enough grip on the road to do its job properly. So the one-wheel drive was soon out of date. But if two wheels are locked on an axle so that they are not free to turn separately, one or the other has to slide. So engineers had to find a way to connect both rear wheels to the engine without sliding and slipping on turns. The device which makes this possible is a part of the rear axle. It is called the differential because it can drive the rear wheels at different speeds. The differential looks complicated, but once we understand its principle, it is amazingly simple. These two wheels are mounted on separate axles and supported by a frame so that they can revolve freely at different speeds. Let's fasten a spoke on the inner end of each axle so that by turning the spokes we can turn each wheel separately. With a bar or cross piece we can turn both wheels in the same direction at the same rate of speed. Let's get something to hold this bar in place so that it will press against the spokes. Notice that this support is not locked to the axle. It turns freely. Now we can spin the wheels by rotating the support. This is fine as long as both wheels are able to turn at the same speed. But let's see what happens when we go around the corner. With this arrangement, we cannot drive one wheel faster than the other. And if we stop one wheel, the other wheel won't budge. Let's put this bar on a pivot so that it can swing in either direction. Now, the bar can still turn both wheels at the same speed. And because it pivots, it lets one wheel turn even when the other is stopped. But if turned too far, the bar will swing around until it won't drive the spokes that turn either wheel. We need another crossbar and more spokes to carry on the job. When we stop one wheel, the crossbars will continue to push the spokes of the free wheel around. As long as both wheels are free to turn, the bars do not swing on their pivot and the wheels move at the same speed. Now we have the working principles of a differential. To adapt the model for use in an automobile, we will have to make a few changes. In order to reduce the jerky action caused by wide spaces between the spokes, we will put in more spokes. Further filling in the spaces between the spokes gives steadier, more continuous action. And changing the shape gives firm, constant contact. Now we can make the gears thicker and stronger. And we have differential gears. The edges are cut so that they will fit together more smoothly and silently. And another gear is added to share the work of driving the axles. The principle is the same. 
In order to turn the support and drive the wheels, we can fasten a large gear here, connected by a smaller gear to a source of power. Notice that the power is connected to the differential at the center line. We can make our model more compact by moving the gears closer together. When we put our differential in an automobile, we have to leave room for the drive shaft, which carries the power from the engine. We may build the floor of the car above the drive shaft. But if we do, we won't have much room inside unless we make the top of the car high too. Of course we could lower the floor and ceiling, but the drive shaft would be higher than the floor. This would have disadvantages. A shaft in the middle of the floor of an automobile would be inconvenient for passengers and would be awkward for carrying luggage. Today, engineers have found a way to make the car roomier and closer to the road without a clumsy shaft above the floor. The drive shaft from the engine to the differential is lowered out of the way and the drive shaft is connected to the rear axle at the bottom. The new low center drive makes the rear axle quieter, stronger and more durable because it gives better, smoother contact between the gears. The automobile of today with the low center drive is stronger and more rugged. Every part of the rear axle has been built to withstand strains far greater than it will ever meet on the straightaway or around the corner.